Hello, and welcome to our new video series on user experience. Uh, so the agenda that we'll be working through here is going to be focused on the end user. And so, and what is this concept of user experience? Uh, so here, you see that we have a few bullet points that we'll kind of walk through in these various videos. Uh, so understanding what is user experience, that's what this video is about. So we're talking about the difference between user experience, and UI, user interface. Uh, what are the various components? And in the next video, we'll be kind of get into what, we, what is user research and understanding information architecture, usability. Um, and then we'll wrap up with talking about accessibility and wireframing. So what is user experience? I love this picture in the background uh, because it, it, it shares what users actually do versus what our intentions were for, uh, in this case, the sidewalk. And so here's a working definition is that user experience focuses on a, a deep understanding of the user. And I think the user is key here. Um, and so the question is, why are we developing these websites? Um, or why are we adding any functionality to our website? And that should be driven by, yes, the business model, but ultimately it should be driven by the users who actually generate the revenue for uh, that company, right? Um, and so <clears throat> user experience focus on the need, the value, right? The abilities of the end user and some also the limitations. And so these keywords here, need, right? Value, uh, their abilities, and also their limitations. And so it's really a, a really in-depth look at the end user uh, and trying to figure out uh, those four things. So here's a graphic that kind of shows you the difference between UI and UX. Uh, again, UX stands for user experience and UI stands for the user interface. Uh, so when we're doing a user interface, we're focusing on the color scheme, uh, the topography scheme, um, the ultimate layout that's best for the end user, uh, some of the graphical pieces, uh, and then all, and then really what will make this site visually appealing to the end user. That's kind of what the UI is, it's everything that the end user sees. Um, but behind the scenes, before we even craft the user interface, you'll see that there's a lot of research that should be, uh, that should happen before we actually get to the actual construction of the interface. And so some of the things you may want to uh, may want to take place before you actually code out the interface is the user experience piece. And But in reality, it, it's a cyclical process. It's not that you do the user UX first and then do the UI, uh, but it should be, it should continue to flip-flop, right? Because uh, you're going to always be studying your end user um, to better enhance your user interface. And so with the UX, you're going to do some things called wireframing, high fidelity, low, low fidelity wireframes, and we'll get into that in a later video. Uh, interaction design, how the end user interacts with the website, the information architecture, essentially your navigation of your website. And then you'll see that this term user research is huge uh, with user experience. We're going to talk about some different uh, research um, methods that we can use to uh, inform us about us, our end users. And then there's use case scenarios uh, that really kind of predict what the end user is going to do. Here's a good comic, comic right? Um, and I like to show this because, like, who's the end user? What do they see, right? Uh, and what do they value, right? But here, um, we think as the developer or the people who design the product or, or the product that we're giving it to that they may like this, right? But ultimately, what does the end user experience? And so that's the whole idea behind user experience, to get into their, uh, their point of view and to figure out what are their needs, what do they value, what are the limitations, and what are their abilities, right? Let me say a few words about, uh, this is going to be worth two points of extra credit. I'm going to have you guys pause this video and watch uh, this uh, video from SNL. Um, and when you're watching this video, what I want you to do is watch it with the lens of this UX honeycomb. Uh, you'll see that this UX honeycomb is what we, what is, this is what we desire. This is what our, this is what we hope for. Uh, we want our interface or our application to be useful. We want it to be desirable, accessible, valuable, credible, findable, usable. Um, what I want you to do is watch this video here um, and point out as many different ways that they uh, you basically many different ways that they've used to alter uh, the echo to cater to a particular audience. And I want you to post that question in the discussion. There's going to be a discussion that's specifically called the echo silver. It's going to be worth two points, but I want you to list as many different ways in which uh, they made that product useful, desirable, accessible, valuable, usable, findable, and credible. And if you need more definition on um, what these terms are, 
I just click to the next slide here. Here's a few definitions of what it means for uh, the useful, usable, desirable, credible, accessible, findable. We're going to have a discussion about this in class, um, but do your best to try to point out as many different ways in which they have achieved some of the things here in the UX Honeycomb. So go ahead and pause this video, watch the Amazon Echo Silver video, and post your response within Canvas. Um, and like I said, that'll be worth two points. It's due before our synchronous session. And um, we'll pick up and talk about some more concepts here related to user experience. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to watch that video and respond to um, the discussion question within Canvas um, in terms of some of the things that they've done for that Amazon Echo Silver. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's comical satire in a sense, right? And so, but there's some good stuff in there in terms of what they did to cater uh, to their target audience. Um, let's jump in this slide here uh, before we end this video. Um, UX, uh, if you were to ask anybody who in this field who are user experience uh, engineers or UX professionals, uh, they would have a hard time describing what they do, right? Um, and the reason being is because, I mean, well, let me say this, you may get several different answers um, from different people in this industry um, because they do different things and some people do it all. Uh, and what I'm, what I'm referring to when I say all, uh, this graphic here does a good job in terms of capturing some of the things that a UX professional would do, right? Uh, they may craft the interface. They may code out the interface using HTML and CSS and JavaScript, right? They may be responsible for the navigation and making sure that the right navigation is applicable to the end user of, the, of that site. And so the navigation and instruction of content. They may be responsible for the human computer interaction, the design of uh, the layout of that, 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 that application. Um, and again, I would say user research uh, infiltrates each of these various components, right? So there's a lot of user, user research that goes into all these different aspects of uh, what makes up UX. Uh, the usability, testing, a lot of testing that goes on here uh, to make sure that the application is meeting the needs of the end user. And then accessibility, what about those who have limitations, those who may need additional assistance when it comes to using your application? And so user experience is more than this data collection. It's about understanding the motivation behind what drives a user uh, to, to use their application, right? And so I like this image here because it kind of shows you some of the different aspects of user experience. And I, like, I like to call them components, um, UX components. And so wireframing is one of those, right? Uh, another user X component would be accessibility, right? Another user X component would be information architecture. And so the next couple of videos, we're going to get into what is user research and some of the different research that goes into these various components. And so stay tuned um, as we walk through some of these things here. But like I said, again, just to reiterate, this is our goal uh, in terms of user experience. We want to make sure that it's useful, desirable, accessible, valuable, credible, findable, and usable. Right? If we were in class here, we would do a short activity uh, where we would do some research on job descriptions and pull out some things of what a UX professional, some of the things that you will find within a UX um, job description. Um, but we're going to forego on this activity. But if you do have some free time just to look at some different, if you just search for user experience, go to dice.com or nd.com and a UX developer or UX engineer, um, just poke around and see what some of the different skills and tools that they use um, to see what some of the work that they may be conducting uh, for certain jobs. All right, in the next video, we're going to talk about user research, and I'm going to keep that video pretty brief. Uh, we're not going to get into all the pieces of user, user research, but nonetheless, we'll talk about some of the, the, some of the research methods that we typically use when we're doing uh, research for our sites.